All right, it's Simply Bitcoin. We break down the news from Twitter, the daily fail, meme review, software releases, the websites by plebs. And today we've got special guest, Brandon Quidham, who is an educator at Swan Bitcoin. He is gonna be joining us a little bit later on, but right now we are kicking it off with the numbers. Let's do it. All right, we are currently at a block height of 676, 152, the current Bitcoin price, 52,650. Chain rewrite days, 602. Total lightning capacity, 1,166.05 BTC. Bitcoin versus gold market cap, 8.72% and sats per dollar. Ugh, we're climbing and it's ugly. 1,898 sats per dollar. We're still below 2K, so it's okay. Man, these Could are could be better but it's only been 11 days since the all-time high unfortunately because it wasn't an all-time high no satoshi the bitcoin chicken if you're new to the channel this is satoshi the rubber bitcoin chicken and he clucks every time the bitcoin reaches an all-time high which wasn't today but hopefully very soon that being said phil it's time for the daily fail okay guys so this is uh this is a tweet from pomp i don't particularly care for pomp but um, so he's not really a pleb. Anyways, um, Mike Green, uh, who is at Professor Plum, is now grouping the crypto community, which, of course, the word crypto, let's just say the Bitcoin community with Antifa and QAnon. OK, because um, let's face it, the rest of them, it's not really a community. It's just a bunch of shitcoin bag holders that are pushing it to each other. Um, anyways, if you're in finance and you don't reject this line of, of thinking and vehemently disavow this type of rhetoric, you are part of the problem. So you know what? Um, I, I'm I'm actually we're, we're not even going to bother playing this clip to be honest, uh, because I I don't I really don't want to give it much more attention than what we're already giving it. This goes along the line of uh, an um, a tweet that was made a couple of days ago by by David Carp for something like that, where he decided to do his mass genocide uh, thought experiment of Bitcoiners. You know, this is the this is the same type of rhetoric, right? Like all of a sudden we're seeing the narrative change because, you know, they're, they're you know, they tried to dismantle Bitcoin in a certain way up until now and it hasn't worked. So now the narrative is shifting right now. All of a sudden we're entering this much, you know, this this much more aggressive than they fight you stage. Now, all of a sudden we're talking about mass genocide. We're talking about getting grouped with extremist groups. I mean, this is just completely insane. I, I'm. Anyways, I shouldn't I shouldn't say that I'm surprised, but I'm I'm very disappointed. Like th this is really a disappointing thing. Yeah, so Phil, what I'm afraid of is essentially, you know, now there's a pattern, right? Now it's not just one person, now it's two people and they're both saying the same thing. They're, you know, calling for violence, you know, whether it's just an example, that's how it always starts, you know, uh to a specific group of people, right? And what tends to happen is in his in very tur uh, turbulent times in history, um, you know, the, a group of people can be seen and can be used and have been used as a scapegoat. So, uh, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Uh, Brendan, uh, we're very curious to think, what, what do you think of this fail, bro? Man, Mike Green is so disappointing. And the guy just digs his heel in, his heels in, and he's just going to double down all the way to the end. And I don't know the exact story here, but there's some controversial thing with his wife where apparently like five years ago or something, his wife said, hey, Mike, husband, let's buy $10,000 worth of Bitcoin. And he said, no, no, we're not going to do it. And if we do do it, we got to do more than that. And they ended up not buying any Bitcoin. And it, that 10,000 would have been worth, you know, I think a hundred million or something like that today. And so it, and the question is, is Mike just salty because his wife was right and he was wrong and he just can't get over himself? Or is there something else here? Because the guy is clearly intelligent, but he's engaging in bad faith. Like he, he's just coming in and taking cheap shots and twisting words and looking for these like tricky debate verbal tactics instead of engaging with the ideas. And so, and then he just blocks all the Bitcoiners. And I had a tweet recently where I, I, I just showed the screenshot of him blocking me. And I said, some men, Mike Green, will literally block every Bitcoiner instead of updating their worldviews. So he's, <laughs> he's on a war path. And first it was Tether is going to destroy Bitcoin. Then he said 40% of Bitcoin transactions are illegal. He said all it takes is $7 billion and you turn Bitcoin into a pile of garbage. 
Bitcoin use is similar to terrorism. Iran, China, Russia control Bitcoin. These are his points. And they make, they make me bullish because his points are nonsense. And he's supposed to be like the Bitcoin critic. Anyways, I'm ready for him to be gone. It's stupid. It's definitely stupid. Uh, definitely, you see this. It's not the only. It's not the only time you see this, right? You see hubris and ego. You know, making uh, have. You know, a lot of these boomers. It's just. It's gonna. It's just gonna have fun staying poor, right? They can't see over their hubris. They can't see over their ego. That's why you have Peter Schiff calling for Bitcoin going to zero for ten years. And if you would have listened to his advice the first time he gave it, it would have cost you millions of dollars, right? So it's just another example of that same stupidity. But anyways, Phil, it's time for the Daily Meme Review. All right, everybody, the meme for today. I don't know if this person created it, but anyways, uh, the person that tweeted it was at BTC simplified underscore. Let's check it out. Hodling Bitcoin in theory, $1 million Bitcoin, hodling Bitcoin in practice. <laughs> shit coins <laughs> uh man dude oh, so the of the cave Sorry. so so freaking accurate uh if if you haven't hodled it more than a year more than two years you have no idea what the hell that meme talks uh, or it, what it represents right so i guess it's an inside meme and for that phil i'm gonna give it a um xbox extender on the controller it's just it's all a control freak. So yeah, that's my score. What about you? Pretty good. Uh, I mean, look, that was a, I you know what that that's a deep meme. That that is a very deep meme. It's okay. So it is very it, it's niche, right? It's you're gonna understand it if you're a Bitcoiner, but also the symbolism that he used is uh, the allegory of the cave, um, which I think is a play. Uh, anyways, I, I don't recall. Um, but uh, anyways. Really well done. Uh, I'm going to go with... All right, you know what? We're going to give him a Seagate SSD drive. Well, it's actually a Seagate laptop hard drive. <laughs> Excellent score, Phil. Uh, it's not even... what I Guys, the first time it recorded, it was muted, so it was edited. Phil, uh, Brandon, what are you going to give that score? I mean, that meme. Yeah, so I'm going to give that meme a pair of magic sunglasses. And the reason why I'm choosing magic sunglasses is when you become a Bitcoiner or you maybe you're not even quote a Bitcoiner yet, you buy your first Bitcoin, there's going to be a lot of distractions. Your emotions are going to get in the way. Someone's going to come at you with some shiny new shitcoin and promising you the world. And many people have fallen down this siren song of the shitcoiners. And the reason why it was so easy for them to fall down this path is because they didn't have magic sunglasses on. These prevent the sirens from getting in. And they also prevent your own emotions from getting scared when the price goes down. <laughs> um, so your stupid paper hands will not get in the way when you have the magic sunglasses on because hodling is hard work. And if you've been hodling for any period of time, you know that you did not get lucky, no matter what the losers say. So this is this is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you take too much of the orange pill, right? This is this is what you become, right? Brandon's personifying that, but excellent scores. Uh, An amazing we, explanation. Uh, amazing, <laughs> yeah, dude, blows my mind. Uh, things that Brandon writes are excellent in general, but anyways, phenomenal scores. Hard drive, SSD. Uh, Xbox thing, extender game, you won't understand, but, uh, and Brandon, of course, we got the magic sunglasses, which I think that's one of the best scores we've ever seen on Simply Bitcoin. But anyways, Phil, it's time for the daily news sponsored by Crypto Cloaks. All right, everybody. We, I feel like we cover so much like FUD, so much like media FUD on Bitcoin. Well, look at this awesome tweet from Zlock, the Bitcoiner that created the original Honey Badger, right? The one that CoinKite uses and Crypto Cloak makes. But anyways, look, it's it's covering another angle. So that's kind of refreshing, right? So Bitcoin deniers, Bitcoin energy consumption is killing the environment. Actual facts, the world's biggest banks, 60 banks have provided $3.8 trillion of financing 
for fossil fuel companies since the Paris climate deal in 2015, right? Uh, to use uh, that conservative uh, Ben Shapiro saying, right? Facts don't care about your feelings, you know, kind of applies to this, right? Uh, but I feel like the people that speak like uh that kind of feed this this uh this climate fud have a career of climate fud right so it's not in their interest to tell the truth about it but uh anyways the the big splash or the big piece of news for today phil the first segment is dude elon tweeted this 16 hours ago i know we're a little late but check this out you can now buy a tesla with bitcoin and i think the mo the more important tweet right is tesla is using only internal and open source software and operates bitcoin nodes directly bitcoin paid to tesla will be retained as bitcoin and not converted to fiat currency so that last part was extremely powerful right because at the end of the day bitcoin and fiat they're of course they're they're monetary they're 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 currencies or currency systems right but at the end of the day they're an idea right so when you have uh elon musk right uh you know the ceo of the the most valuable car company in the world flouting out this idea of fiat currency it's bad right he's telling that to everybody um I suspect that uh, not my again, not my words to use Ross Stevens words, right? There's a wall of money coming um, and I suspect it's going to hit very soon. But again, we don't like to speculate on the show. Phil, what are your thoughts? And then, of course, we'll move on to our guest. Um, so, I mean, this will probably pop some some people's balloons, but I, you know, to me, you know, he's a great marketer and, and, you know, obviously we love him being in Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, I wonder how many Teslas they're really going to sell for Bitcoin. Um, but what I like about it, again, if we zoom out and look at it in terms of perception, right? Um, he is making a huge statement. Okay, like that is a massive statement coming from somebody that is pushing the envelope, you know, coming from a company that is pushing the envelope and, and actually is changing things. So... I think that, you know, perception wise, this is huge. And I hey, look, you know what? We we can't ask for better. I mean, talk about stars aligning. Yeah, dude, it's 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 we've talked about this moment for years. It's all happening all at once very quickly. It's very surreal. Brandon, what are your thoughts on Elon? Yeah, so first of all, I'm a massive Elon fan. Um, and so as a fanboy. You know, maybe my opinions are tainted here, but um, with this regard, with this exact news story, I think that, yeah, I don't think anyone should buy Teslas with their Bitcoin. I think that'd be an absolutely stupid waste of Bitcoin. And so don't don't buy Teslas with your Bitcoin. Um, but I am fired up about the PR here. And I think Phil kind of nailed it. Um, yeah, the, the message this sends is worth way more than any short term impact. And I don't think Tesla will see much revenue here. But it helps with three narratives. One helps with the green narrative, right? Uh, Tesla's on the side of an optimistic future with alternative energy. And uh, the fact that he's putting his money where his mouth is on this supposedly bad for the environment tool is, is a good is a good win for us. Um, it also slashes into the narrative of people, um, it, you know, naive people who say, well, what can I do with my Bitcoin? I can't buy anything with it. Now you have a very marquee, showy way to respond to that. And that that actually works um, for the type of people who bring up that complaint. And then uh, lastly, like, it's just normie catnip. You know, n normies need, most normal people need a social consensus before they adopt something new. And I would say most new Bitcoiners are comfortable on the fringe of society and will do things even though it's against the tribe's uh, consensus. And so little things like this just sort of chip away at it and it de-risks uh, this transition for normies. And so I think long term, that's good. And yeah, the fact that they're running open source software and doing it the right way makes me very bullish. I think Elon is not that far down the rabbit hole, even though some people think he is. I think he's still just knee deep. And so any incremental step he takes is, is good uh, because I think if he fully gets orange pilled, um, shit's going to get crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dude, uh, it's, it's, man, I, I don't even know. I don't even know the internet. It's going to break the freaking internet. The internet. But I, I definitely agree, Brandon. It is definitely a lot of noise and very little signal. So I definitely agree with that perspective. Uh, but anyways, 
we're moving on to the next segment. Guys, usually I would pull up an article and pull it up and, you know, just kind of back up the point that I was making. But I don't want to do that today because I want you guys to use your own memory and it's very important. Usually on this show, we cover the news as it relates to Bitcoin, right? In the last year, guys, we have seen things because of the pandemic that we have never imagined would be possible, right? Whether, you know, it's the, the the election, whether what happened in the Capitol building, whether what's happening with the cancel culture around, right? It's like kind of this upheaval, right? This upheaval in our times. Brandon actually goes more uh, deep into this, right? He, 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 he nailed it down like, kind of like into like a science in this, in this essay, this article that he wrote, which we will link down in the link description. But the reason I wanted to talk about that today is because we talk about this type of news a lot about what the moment in time right now is freaking crazy, right? So Brandon uh, describes that as this idea of a fourth turning, right? This idea that, you know, good men, create uh, uh, good men, create good times, good times, create weak men, weak men, create bad times. And the cycle kind of repeats itself. Right. And we're entering right now. We, we went from uh, good times uh, cr are creating weak men. And I think weak men are creating bad times. I think that's the era or moment in time that we're, that we're beginning to live through right now, but it's, 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 it's crazy. And Brandon actually, identified what's actually going on. So Brandon, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, sure. So the essay is called Bitcoin and the Rhythms of History. Uh, you can find it at brandingquidum.com. But the essential thesis here is uh, there's a book called The Fourth Turning written in the late 90s, uh, very similar to The Sovereign Individual written around the same time, similarly prophetic in what they're pre preaching here. And the thesis of the book is that humanity uh, human civilization goes in these 80 to 90 year cycles that continue to repeat. And the, the thesis is essentially that we go through a uh, wartime crazy period, let's say World War II. After that period, we uh, have a lot of chaos and then we rebuild all our institutions. Uh, we're sick of fighting and, you know, sort of like the puzzle pieces of the world get rearranged. There's new order, there's new whatever. And then we build new healthcare, new politics, new organizations. And then that the getting's good for a little while, right? That'd be like the fifties and sixties where like state culture is stable. Theoretically, things are pretty good or at least not volatile. And then over time, these institutions for whatever reason start to decay. And that would be a period like the the twenties would be like a perfect example of the decay. Um, you know, the flapper area, you know, sort of the getting's good, everyone's getting wealthy. And so there's a lot of excess and deregulation and whatever. And at the end of that excess and deregulation, you end up with institutions that are awful. So I think most people would understand that the financial system's crumbling, the healthcare system's garbage, education's horrible. All of our exterior world is garbage right now. And people are starting to feel that. And so I, what happens I, is so oh, go I, ahead. so and, and and media on top of that it's 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 academia and we've been covering that Brandon so much on this channel right this idea that the institutions the the institutions that people used to have trust in are completely just you can't trust them right you can't trust them they failed right that the, this pandemic has just highlighted that even more it's not about picking left it's not about picking right the whole system's rotten right so um so in and, and i love the fact that in your paper right you 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 kind of you you break down you explain how this is normal right and that there's a light on the other side Absolutely. Yeah. This cycle has played out many times throughout history. And you brought up a really good point there, which is that um, the society that we live in is starting to crumble, right? Our institutions are. And that's okay for a little while, right? That's like the, the 90s and early 2000s where deregulation is happening. But we sort of sow the seeds of our own demise there because eventually it gets so bad and people look around and they go, whoa, how did this happen? All the institutions that hold society together are not working. And then there creates this counter force that says, we need to change this. And that's why you see all this populism. Because in order to make these wide sweeping changes in society, you have to band people together and make sacrifices to make a change. And so historically, the only catalyst big enough to create new institutions has been war. 
So all previous fourth turnings have been uh, total war, uh, World War II, uh, Civil War, the Revolutionary War, and then one over in Western Europe before that. And so the question is, do we need a war now in order to rally the troops in order to make these wide sweeping changes? And I hope the answer is no. Um, but my assessment, we have about five, 10 years left of this fourth turning. And like all previous fourth turnings, uh, the chaos uh, hits a crescendo. We re, re redo the game board and there's light on the end of the other tunnel. And I wouldn't say that it's always, it doesn't always have to be horrible and then good. It's more like volatility spikes. We rearrange, we rebuild. And then there's a period where we're sick of fighting and things are more stable, but that stable period could also be a totalitarian state. Right. And so I think it's important that we stay vigilant and we, cre we we actively participate in this next period and in a period where people are demanding order. Right. We want order as a society, but we have almost no order. Um, Bitcoin actually plugs in here really nicely. Right. The institutions are crumbling, but Bitcoin all of a sudden is this new type of institution that creates order and society can re-architect around this stable, uh, democratizing base layer protocol of, of humanity. And so when I think about it through the fourth turning lens, I'm actually extremely optimistic that we have Bitcoin, because if we play this thing out right, um, I, I guess I should say it fits in perfectly. It's the thing we need. Our financial system is breaking and the society demands order. Bitcoin provides order and it's the base of a new financial system. So our two biggest problems are solved by this thing. And so if we can get uh, humanity to realize this, I think we just might have a way out without having total war like we've had in the past because adopting Bitcoin essentially allows individuals, countries, businesses, et cetera, to save themselves by waking up to the fact that they can offload uh, toxic capital into this new thing. Um, and, and that's beautiful to see. I absolutely agree. And I think that, I, I think you're right. I think that the, the this, this centralization of the financial system needs to go, right? The, the base layer needs to be built anew. It's already here. It's called Bitcoin and build the new world on top of this, this this orange layer, right? It's very exciting. Uh, Phil, do you have any closing thoughts? No, you know what? I, I don't want to pollute the waters. Okay, like I I love I, I love when Brandon explains things, and to me, like this was just absolutely perfect. <laughs> it was it was definitely it was definitely awesome. It was an amazing yeah. news segment, Phil. There was a software release today. Why don't you tell everybody about it? Software releases. All right, we've got a huge one today. Actually, massive. We've got Ronin Dojo version 1.9.0 was released, and the link to that is down below in the show notes. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. All right, guys, that was today's show. I want to give a shout out to our awesome guest. You could follow him on Twitter at BQuidem. We will put that down in the link description. He is helping build Swan Bitcoin. Absolutely love them. Dollar cost average by Bitcoin with Swan. We have a link. There's no excuse. Go check out swanbitcoin.com slash simply Bitcoin. And of course, definitely, definitely, I highly recommend Brandon's article. You can go find it on Brandon's website, brandonquinnon.com. Bitcoin and the rhymes of history. Uh, in my opinion, it kind of gives you uh kind of a historical idea where we are in time right uh that's kind of that's how it made me feel um it, it's in an, a, an excellent article i definitely recommend it but anyways guys you know what to do if you enjoyed the episode smash that like button and uh if you love the show if you want to hear the news from the bitcoiners perspective definitely subscribe and we will see you tomorrow for another episode of simply bitcoin